Hey, how's it going everyone and welcome to another tutorial. As always, I'm your host Norbert PM. And in today's tutorial, I'm going to show you the inner workings of a blockchain by building a small simulation using JavaScript and Node.js. Now, this is not a complete blockchain, but the information in here is just enough for you to understand a practical way on how a blockchain works and how a block would be created and then added to the blockchain. I also had a pretty recent complete theoretical and historical presentation on blockchain technologies in one of my podcast episodes. So if you're interested in that, then you can check it out by following the link in the description below. Also, the entire code is as always down in the description below, including all the resources that I needed for my tutorials. Okay, enough chit chat, let's jump into the project. So I just created an empty folder here. And I called this blockchain the Norbicoin blockchain. Okay, so let's get started by creating within here a file. Let's just call it block.js. Now I'm going to use classes in order to create the block and the blockchain itself. So let's get started by creating our very first class. Let's call it block, block. And within here, we're going to create a constructor that is going to have a couple of dependencies. So let's get started with our constructor function. Within our constructor, we're going to have our index, our timestamp, our data, and our previous hash. I'm going to explain each one of them as we type through them. So the index is basically the index indicates where the block sits on the chain. Now the timestamp is going to indicate when the block was created. Of course, if you wish later on, you can add to this a specific time function, but I'm going to insert here string. So each time we're going to create the block, we're going to hard code the, the date in there. You can also hard code then time and so forth and so on. Now, the next thing that this constructor needs is the data. So what kind of, what data is there going to be sent? Now for data, this can be any type of data that you want to be included in the block. For example, the amount of currency that is going to be sent via this block. The next one is going to be the previous hash. So let's type in here previous, previous, and hash. And I'm going to automatically assign this hash, not hashy, to a empty string for now, because this is going to await for the hash of the previous block. This is also going to be used basically as a identifier that each block with, within the chain has the hash of has his own hash and the previous blocks hash. Okay, so let's start and assign them within our constructor. So this dot index is going to be equal to index, then this dot hash, or this dot timestamp is going to be equal to the timestamp, whatever timestamp we pass in there. And this dot data is going to be equal to the data that will be passed in there. And of course, the hash is going to be previous hash is going to be the same as the previous hash is going to be passed in here. Now we still need one last thing and that is the hash of the block itself. So this dot hash and this I'm just going to assign to an empty string because this one needs to be calculated. Okay, so how can we calculate the hash of a block? Well, there is a specific function for this. I'm not going to create one, I'm going to import one. Now in order to calculate the hash, of the block, I will use the SHA256, which we'll need to install and import. For those of you who don't know, the SHA256 is a patented cryptographic hash function that outputs a value that is 256 bits long. Okay, now also a quick note, in order to proceed with the tutorial from this point on, you will need Node.js and NPM installed if you don't have them installed and you don't know how to do so, no problem. I have a quick video on this, how to install NPM and Node.js. The link is down in the description below. Please pause the video here, install them and come back to the video. It's just a two minute or three minute long video. So, or if you have them, then let's move on. So as I said, in order to have access to the SHA256, we first of all need to install it. So I'm going to run. And for this, I'm going to open up a terminal. And from here, I'm going to initialize a package.json using npm init, we go to hit here, enter, 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 doesn't matter. Okay, now we can install our crypto JS. So npm, npm, i and crypto dash JS. And from here, we can now install our crypto JS dependency. We're going to use npm install and crypto JS. 
Crypto.js. Okay, now that we have Crypto.js installed, we can now bring it in and assign it to a variable. So I'm going to use here, right above my block, variable const and assign it to SHA256 and then require it from the Crypto.js library, dash JS and forward slash SH8256. Now that we have our SH8 function, we can now add it to the block via a method. So let's go in here, also the constructor, and let's call this calculate hash. Within this method, we're just going to return the SHA hash by using this.index plus this.previous hash, previous hash, then plus this.timestamp. And of course, we're going to take the data, but we're going to use JSON data for this. So JSON.stringify, and we're going to return this.data. And because I don't want to return this as a object, at the end of it all, I'm also going to set this, uh, set this as a string, so to string, with the to string method. And this should return us now the, the hash. And now that we have this, we can now, I'm just going to leave this in here, we can basically use this dot hash and assign it to calculate hash, of course. Actually, this dot calculate hash. Okay, so we have a block. Now it's time to create our blockchain. This we're going to use another class again, so class blockchain. And within here, in the blockchain, is where we are going to add our block by initiating it via the constructor function. So constructor, and within here, we're just going to initiate it using this dot chain. I'm going to assign it to an empty array. Now when the blockchain is going to be initiated, the very first block that should be in this should be the Genesis block. Basically the Genesis block is the very first block that is going to be created and it has no previous hash, it just has his own hash, but each and every block that is going, but the next block that is going to be created is going to refer to that hash. So in order to create the Genesis block, I will use here another method. Let's create, let's call this create Genesis this M block. Okay, this let's return now a block because we have now access to our block class, a new block. And within here, we're just going to pass in the index, which is going to be zero. The date, let's say this is, this was created on the very first of January and 2022. Let's also give it a name of Genesis block as data. And of course, for the previous hash, we're going to have zero. Okay, and now we can pass this in here into our array, call this dot create Genesis block. And now this is going to be hey, executed as soon as the block is created. Our next step would be now to add blocks to this blockchain. So now that we have our blockchain, and we also have our Genesis block, we can now start and create. So now that we have our blockchain, and we also have our Genesis block within it, we can refer to it by adding, by adding more blocks. But we first need a method that adds them to the chain. So let's create here a add block method. Okay, now before we do this, let's take a look at a block. So when a block is created, it's, it needs an index, a timestamp data, and the previous hash. Now we really need the previous hash. And how can we get that previous hash? Well, we need another method that is going to get the previous hash or the previous hash of the block. So let's call this get previous block. And this method is just going to return this dot chain and whatever is in that chain. So this dot chain dot length and minus one because we want the previous block, not the, not the actual block that we create. Okay, now it's time to create our block. So we're going to pass in here a new block and we're going to say that when that new block is passed in, we're going to take the previous hash and then assign it to get previous block and hash. We're going to use the hash method on it, the hash property. Then we're going to recalculate that hash by saying new block dot hash, and we're going to assign it to a new block dot calculate hash. 
Then we're going to end this by pushing this to the chain. So this.chain.push, I'm going to push the newly created block. Okay, so I think we're good now. We can actually start by testing our chain. So let's go down here and let's first start off with initiating the blockchain. So let's call let, let's say Norby coin. We're going to assign this to a new blockchain. Okay, and now we can call upon Norby coin and let's add a block to it. Now the block method awaits for a new block. So let's pass in here new block, which is then awaiting for a index. We're going to say that this is the very first block that we pass in. So number one, a date. Let's say that this is uh, the 23 of January and year 2022. Now for the data, let's pass in as a object, a amount, so amount of, let's say 200 Norby coins. Okay. Now we can initiate this by calling console log. We need to call this as JSON dot stringify and we're going to stringify the Norby coin. Okay, now we can run a block by running our file. So node and we're going to run a block.js file. Okay, and there we go. There's our blockchain. There's a very first, actually let me do something. I'm going to uh, have this in different, let's say so. It's going to give me four rows because this is this is not how I want to see this and node dot node block dot js okay so I'm getting now a different format and there we go there's our chain which has the index the first first block within it data genesis block index zero the creation date previous hash which is zero and then the hash was bum 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 and now the next block should have the previous hash, exactly the same hash that the Genesis block has. So 18209, let's check this 18209 as a previous hash, then has its own hash, which is 12107. So let's add now a, not a block to the chain. Let's go up here, let's copy this and let's add block number two. Let's say it was created on the 15th of February and let's add the amount of 100. And let's run node block.js again. And now let's see, we have, hey, we have two free blocks now in our chain. So index one, index zero, and index two, which has now, let me also check the amount of 100, and the other one should have the amount of 200. Exactly. Let's also check the hashes. So index one has, uh, this is his hash, one, two, one zero and now the previous hash of index two is one two one zero okay perfect so this is how theoretically or actually also practically a blockchain will would work hope you enjoyed this if you did thumbs up subscribe to the channel if you have any kind of questions or suggestions please leave them in the comment section below and catch you next time bye bye